caregivers and everyone watching. Today is July 8th, 2020, and Mrs. Gus and I are here to talk about Temple Grandin and Animal Protective Leagues. Dog Play of the Legion. I play the Legion to the flag of the United States of America through into Republic on which stand one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, so today our learning targets or standards are to continue to cite textual evidence to support our analysis, to write informative and explanatory text to examine a topic, which we're going to talk about the APL, and continue our um, analysis of Temple Grandin, and conduct short research projects, which is always awesome, and a lot of our scholars have a background with the Wax Museum, so that's awesome. And we're gonna determine or clarify the meaning of unknown and multiple meaning words, which we've done for the last couple of months. Every time we say context clues, we're always hitting that standard. So good morning, everyone. We're so excited to have you here today. So we've got lots of friends with us that fits just perfectly <laughs> with our segment today. <laughs> we have Elvis. <laughs> Chloe and Lucy, Lucy. <laughs> and these three adorable little seven we call kittens we are fostering for the APL um, the friendship APL in Illyria and today we're going to talk about um, Temple Grandin and her just phenomenal humane way of finding different methods to help animals and her brilliant mind, which along with the APL, do so much to help animals humanely um, in yeah. our society. And that's what we focus on too in middle school is how animals enhance the life of others. That's one of our um, embedded assessments with Springboard. So and it works out well. Yeah, yeah, so we've got lots of furry friends with us here today. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> So let's go back to our essential question. How can animals help improve the lives of humans? All right, so do you guys remember Owen and Hachi from so long ago, our heroes um, segment? I hope you do, because Owen and Hachi are such the perfect example of animals improving the lives of humans. All right, so think about Temple Grandin. All right, think about how is it that animals helped her? Because she sure has helped them, but in a huge way, they played an integral part of her life as well. Is it possible that animals have what we would call language? Well, they have, so I'm call it sensory-based thinking. When I do my animal behavior talks, I go, well, they think in pictures. Like I have this picture of this horse that was scared to death of black cowboy hats. He was abused by somebody wearing a black cowboy hat. Now, if you wear a white cowboy hat, he's just fine. Huh. You can wear a ball cap, he's fine. But if you get a big fat black purse that's sort of the same size, that might be a problem. Huh. You see, it's a visual picture. Uh, animals recognize the voices of the good and the bad people. There was an elephant that was afraid of uh, diesel-powered equipment, but he was fine with gasoline-powered huh. equipment. And there's a lot of complicated stuff with the tone of voice in animals. Hmm. Uh, you know, for, for conveying a different emotion. But it's a sensory-based world. It's also a world of detail. And when I did my first work with livestock, I got down in the chutes to see what they were seeing. You know, everybody's like forcing the cattle through all these chutes. And I noticed, well, this animal would balk at a shadow. Or you'll see this glass has got reflections. You know, reflection on a wet floor. Mm. The steer would stop and put his head down. And other people weren't noticing this visual detail that the steer was noticing. Because I've found in my work with the slaughter plants, if you get rid of uh, the reflections and the chain hanging down and the coat on the fence, then they walk right up the chute because that's really what they're afraid of. They don't know what slaughtering is. It's, 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 vi it's a world of visual detail. I tell my students, you want to understand your dog, you need to get away from language. What are its ears doing? What is it looking at? What's the tail position? And then, of course, different animals have instinctual um, behaviors of different primates hug each other yeah, nice lovey-dovey. Yeah. <laughs> but dogs, if I put my hand up over the back of the dog like that, that's a dominance thing in dogs. Go look at all the pictures and uh -huh. greeting cards of kids hugging doggy around the shoulders. He's tolerating it, <laughs> but he doesn't have that mouth open in a nice, relaxed, um, open mouth. He's got to kind of, <laughs> you know, 
tight <laughs> shut like that because there's a little clash here between the hardwired primate lovey-dovey and um, yes, it's yeah. wired to a different circuit in the dog. But it's, it, you know, uh, I don't really, I'm kind of outclassed here on getting discussion as to what language is, but it's all sensory based. Yes, yeah. And there's certain kinds of very abstract prose that I just get all kinds of inappropriate associations and it doesn't really mean much to me. Mm -hmm. Paul, I wanted well, to ask you about the Watson thing. Were you, yeah, what did you me, take away from well, that? Let me, well, first I want to thank Temple because I, would, I have a greyhound, Tessie, and I'll always <laughs> hug her around the neck. And she always kind of gives me that look. Hug her, hug her yeah. a little, hug her a little yeah, further I'll, back. I'll, I'll do that. And, there and if you hug so, her a little further back, she'll be fine. The other thing is, don't pat your dog like this. That's it. Stroke it. Really? Make it feel like the mother's tongue. We, Don't do this to the dog. We Please. have to talk because I'm doing everything okay. wrong with All my right. dog. <laughs> I want you to think back to last week's episode. All right, so we'd like you to write out five questions that you would ask Temple Grandin if you had the opportunity to interview her. All right, then we'd love for you to share your questions with us and Mrs. Gus and myself, our email addresses are right there. So send your questions to us. We would love to see them. Okay, so now let's take a look at some example questions. Okay, so if I were gonna interview Temple Grandin, I would ask Temple the following questions. Number one, what message would you send to middle schoolers who feel like they are outsiders? Number, Number two. two, do you think college is for everyone? So do you think that everybody should go to college or is it okay to continue after high school going to a trade school getting a job um i think that's a that's a huge question number three who has been your single biggest supporter so when you look at temple grandin's life was it her mom was it her teacher was it her aunt number four in what way can we make more people aware of how people with autism are able to be successful? And number five, once you watch the movie, this question will make more sense. Have you overcome your fear of doors? Because in the, in the movie and in Temple Grandin's life, doors were a huge part of her getting different opportunities. So every door that she um, encountered either was a challenge or an opportunity. So it's kind of cool to look at that theme um, of the doors. And that's what we analyze a lot with our sixth graders when we, um, you know, go through and analyze the movie. So now what we're going to do is show you a clip from the Temple Grandin movie. And we so encourage you to check online or we know that this movie is at your local library. So if you have time this summer, this is an excellent movie to watch with your family. My name is Temple Grandin. I'm not like other people. She's an amazing visual thinker. Are you a scientist? I used to work for NASA. Mm -hmm. Can you bring everything you've seen to your mind? Sure. Wow. Can't you? Excellent work, Temple. Really excellent work. How'd you figure that out? So you can see all around without moving his head. How is she? She's good. You do remember, though, something's gonna set her off. When was she diagnosed? She was four. Temple! I have done everything that I can for Temple. <laughs> we know how different she is. Different, not less. You have a very special mind, you know that? Think of it as a door. A door that's going to open up onto a whole new world for you. Pick a subject. Cows? Do they have colleges with cows? Yes, they do. Why are some mowing more allowing than others? There must be a reason they're saying something. Well, I reckon you could get Dr. Doolittle on out here. He probably could tell you. <laughs> mooing. You want to do research and write your master's on mooing. I can see a shoot just as a cattle will, because that's something my autism lets me do. You wacko. I know my system will work, because I've been through it a thousand times in my head. My husband read about you. 
Miss Grandin, this is a masterpiece. I don't want my thoughts to die with me. I want to have done something. It's nothing short of a miracle. Okay, so here is your research project idea. All right, so Temple Grandin changed how cattle were treated by designing a new method for their corral. Think about our world today. What structures can you think of that could be redesigned in order to better our society? So we'd like you to write a paragraph describing why you chose that structure and why it needs to be changed. Sketch out a drawing for how to improve it. Okay, so the top right drawing is Temple's sketch of how she envisioned these cattle to walk through the corral in a humane way versus how they originally were walking through. All right, so then we are challenging you to use household objects to build the new structure. So after you have your drawing, then how can you actually put it into life, All right? So then you're gonna write a second informative paragraph explaining how this positively impacts our society. And this is an amazing project. And this is Mrs. Fisher's idea. This is so <laughs> cool. No, really, this is so um, we were just collaborating. We were just talking with each other and we were thinking, you know, how how could our scholars accomplish this project? And we talked about what if you redesigned what our schools are going to look like in the fall? Like, what would our gym look like? What would the cafeteria look like? What would our classrooms look like? So that might be a real world um, experience for you to engineer what our classrooms are gonna look like, what our hallways are gonna look like. Okay, so what we're gonna take a look at next is some amazing, amazing video from the Cleveland APL. And the Animal Protective Leagues all around us every day, um, they save thousands and thousands of animals. So for the past couple years, my family um, has gone out to the Friendship APL in Elyria, and we've done some volunteer work out there, and now we're doing some fostering of animals. So this here is Sophie, and she is an angel. And Sophie came from a very, very rough situation where she was not healthy at all um, about a month ago, and we're doing everything we can to bring her back to good health. Um, but if it wasn't for the people at the APL going around and saving all these animals from these really just horrible situations, um, Sophie wouldn't even be here today. So, and that's where the kittens are from. And that's where the kittens are from too. Yeah. So today we're going to show you, um, the inside of the APL and how many really cool jobs there are, because we know a lot of you are big animal lovers. And we know Cleveland even has a school for if high school, if you're interested, um, Washington Park, hmm. they highlight animals and they have lots of really cool programs there. So um, any future eighth graders coming in, that's something to think about as, as this year goes on. All right, so let's, let's see what happens with the Cleveland APL. And you said that ever since you had Sophie at your house, she's gained two pounds, she's, right? She is. Yeah. She's gained weight and she's walking and she wasn't doing any of those things when we first got her. So and she has a little bell on her. <laughs> because so she's so little, we have to know where she is so we can hear the little bell. <laughs> and then we know she's wandering around. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, so what is the APL? It's the Animal Protective League, founded in 1912, so that's over 100 years ago, and incorporated in 1913. It's a voluntary organization that accepts, picks up, and shelters unwanted or homeless animals, putting them up for adoption. Ms. Stella Hatch and Mrs. Virgil A. Dustin organized the league, which cared for 3,661 animals in 1917. It was related to the Humane Society of Cleveland, founded in 1873 which had one branch for the prevention of cruelty to children and one for the prevention of cruelty to animals. The latter, use your context clues, became part of the Animal Protective League 
1927. The league's early focus included the draft animals used in city commerce. Later, it concentrated on house pets. Since 1919, the league has, has operated at 1729 Wiley Avenue. So let's look at the history. In 1934, the league's board and the Cuyahoga County commissioners contracted the Animal Protective League to perform the county's dog catching and sheltering while the county supports the deputy dog wardens and humane agents. The league also coordinates education on animal care with the public schools, conducts legal investigation of reports of cruelty, spays and neuters, and offers outreach programs and veterinary services for those who cannot afford a private animal doctor. Funding comes from endowment, fees, gifts, and bequests, in addition to county and corporate support. So let's take a look at the amazing people from the Cleveland APL. Hello, and welcome to the Cleveland APL. We have been here since 1913, right in the same spot, helping animals in need. Our mission is to foster compassion and end animal suffering. And last year, we helped over 13,000 animals that needed us. This year, we've helped animals like little Bubblegum, who sadly was left alone, abandoned in an apartment. She's got super short, cute hair now, but this is not how this poor pup looked when she came in. She was severely matted. She desperately needed care, and she got that here. So Bubblegum came to us through our Humane Investigations Department, and that's just one of the ways that we get animals. Sometimes an owner has to surrender an animal. Sometimes an animal has been abandoned. We also take in stray cats. And once they're here, they get all the care they need, not just routine checkups and vaccines, but we have an incredible medical department and a second chance program that allows us to care for animals that need extraordinary medical care. Uh, we have other, other programs as well that help the animals. If, if maybe you want to help but adoption isn't what you're thinking you can do, you can volunteer at the APO. You can do any number of jobs here. You can come and walk dogs like Bubblegum. You can foster animals. So maybe you can't have an animal forever, but you want to help an animal in need temporarily. Bubblegum also needs to go to a foster home for a little bit to recover from some of the medical ailments that she had. We're really doing a lot of incredible work at the APL through a lot of progressive programs like our second chance program that I mentioned and the medical care that our team provides. We're doing it in a building. I mentioned we've been here since 1913 and sometimes it feels like our building is about that old. It's not, but it ha we have outgrown what we're able to do in this facility. So while the work that we do grows, the help that we provide our community grows, we're working on doing some expanding of the facility as well so that we can provide even better and more care for the community and the animals that need us. So if you want more information about that, you can visit the website here, unleashthedream.org. If you want more information about the APL and the programs that I've talked about here, you can visit www.clevelandapl.org. Thank you. All right, here we go with our context clues. So I want you to think back to what was said in the video, all right? She said the bubble gum was severely matted, okay? So would you say that matted means A, straightened into a flat form, or B, tangled into a thick mass, okay? Next one, sometimes owners have to surrender an animal. Is that A, the action of giving up possession of something, or B, to place in an inconspicuous spot? All right, and third one, you can foster an animal. Is that A, permanently adopting, or B, encourage the development of something? Okay, so think about the video. All right, let's see if your answers match the correct ones. All right, so if you said tangled into a thick mass, that is matted. The act of giving up possession of something is surrender, and encouraging the development of something is foster. Okay, so guess what time it is? It's journal time. I love journal time. Mm -hmm. All right, so this is a quote from Temple Grandin. My advice is you always have to keep persevering by Temple Grandin. So what we'd like you to do is to grab a piece of paper 
and think about a time in your life that you had to persevere. You had a tough, challenging time that you couldn't quit. You had to just keep going. And that's what's happened to us in the last couple months is, you know, we all left school and we didn't know what direction we were going in. And that's the same with our scholars, our administrators, our teachers. And we tried so many different avenues and we didn't stop. So we, we kept persevering on how to, you know, be in contact with you. And we got this great opportunity to do these mm -hmm. television shows. Um, so we didn't give up. We kept trying to figure out how we could reach you. And it was hard in the beginning, you know, when school shut down, we missed you guys. Yeah. And having to figure out ways and different methods to still communicate and still teach and still be part of your lives. So we just, we kept at it and we're really glad to be here with you guys. So now think about your life. When was a tough time? When can, when did you persevere? I am Brenda. I am the adoption supervisor at the Cleveland APL. So I get the pleasure of seeing all of these wonderful animals that we get in our building through their process. So usually we get many different animals here through, from many different situations. Um, so this is just one, one story. So this is Figaro. As you can tell, he is very affectionate. He loves love. He really loves people. And he actually came into us as an injured stray. So there was a good, good Samaritan that saw him in her neighborhood. Um, she noticed that he was limping. He wasn't using his leg, so he had actually a broken front leg. Um, so he was brought into us. Um, we came in through our intake department and then went through our clinic and got the medical care that he needed. And now he is ready to find someone who is willing to take this hunk of love home. So that is just one kind of snippet as to what we do. So sometimes cats come in, come in as strays. Sometimes cat come, cats come in as owner surrenders. Sometimes we also help out other shelters and they transfer them to us when they don't have the space or the means to care for them, for them in their facility. So Figaro is just one of our lovely kitties but we will also let you meet one of our lovely dogs too. <laughs> and this handsome boy is Credence. He is one of the many dogs that we have at the shelter right now. Probably a, a pit bull shepherd mix. Um, we always just best guess the, the breed, so it's never a guarantee unless we know who the parents are. But he is a really wonderful boy who's looking for a family. He came in as one of our owner surrenders. So that means that his previous family could no longer take care of him and they brought him into us. They were moving and where they were moving to, they couldn't take dogs. So we all know that unfortunately that happens sometimes and sometimes life can be unpredictable. So we decided that this guy was gonna come into us and find his new forever family where he will live out a, a wonderful life. Chris, can you say hi? He's very distracted by all the goings on. <laughs> but he's a really good boy, very sweet, and he's ready to, to find his new home. Hi guys, welcome to the Friendship APL in Illyria. So I cannot say enough great things about this Friendship APL. They are phenomenal. Every single day, the people here work tirelessly, so many long hours to help animals in so many different ways. So we're gonna take a look at a few of the animals that are here today, and then we're gonna do a little bit of a writing based on these animals. All right, so the first one I wanna introduce you to is Snacks, okay? This is Snacks. Snacks is an absolute sweetheart. Don't you just love his face? All right, so we're gonna take a look at what is online about Snacks so that you can read about him and then anyone who's interested in maybe adopting him can come out and make an appointment. So let's take a look. And I want you to pay real close attention because you're gonna be doing a writing just like there is online. Okay, so they had to name him Snacks because as you can see from his potato-like physique, Snacks loves snacks. This senior beagle is an affectionate, easygoing guy. He's happy to mosey around outside and get some major sniffs in. Snacks doesn't seem to mind the presence of other dogs because he was transferred in from another rescue. We don't know his background or how he would be with cats. Snacks does like to sing. 
saying what <laughs> he has a mild dental disease which may need treatment eventually if you want a cushy affectionate and easygoing friend come eat snacks and thank you to stephanie super from the friendship apl for writing this biography online that's awesome and if you take a look at the last picture that's snacks singing <laughs> <laughs> i love it hi guys this is Roxy. All right, Roxy is a German Shepherd here at Friendship. And today we are gonna be taking a look at her biography. And again, you're gonna be writing something very similar. All right, Roxy is beautiful. <laughs> She's young. She's so pretty. And the German Shepherd breed, which we're gonna take a look at in a minute, is incredibly smart. All right, they have so many different tasks that they are able to perform. Um, for so many different types of work. All right, so take a look at little Roxy here. Beautiful Roxy. <laughs> and now we're gonna take a look at her online biography. Okay, so now if you would go online, this is what you would see about Roxy. Roxy is gonna rock your world. <laughs> she has a wonderful nurturing spirit. Roxy's a shepherd mix that is a pleasure to be around. She walks well on a leash, is housebroken, and loves to give and receive affection. Roxy has shown interest in other dogs at the shelter, but we're unsure if she's lived with other animals before. She is a smart cookie that has figured out how to jump fences, so she needs to be supervised outside. Roxy will make a devoted companion to her future adopter. Also written by Stephanie Super at Friendship, okay? So now, look at those words in red. You are about to do a writing piece. Boom, it's your turn to write. <laughs> okay, so now use these exemplars that you just saw from the previous slides to write your own animal biography. Okay, you can write about your own pet, your neighbor's pet, your best friend's pet, or you can take a look at any one of those pictures below. Okay, so there's kitten on the one side, there are two dogs from the APL in the middle, and there's a ferret, because I know a lot of you guys have ferrets out there too. So remember, any kind of animal can be written about for a biography. Here at the Cleveland APL, we use fear-free handling. And that means we um, try to do less restraint and um, have less hands on the animal during their exam to reduce their fear, anxiety, and stress. Every staff member here at the APL is certified in fear-free handling. And we try to use this practice on all the animals here at the shelter, as well as the animals we see from the community to try to make it more positive experience when they come to the vet. So let's make some connections through writing using textual evidence. Temple Grandin believes strongly that humans must treat animals humanely. Her brilliant mind changed the world for cattle as she improved squeeze chutes and restraint systems. This prevented the animals from being hurt by keeping them calm through nearly eliminating upsetting, upsetting sights and sounds, jostling and especially pain. So think about the connection between Temple Grandin's designs and the fear-free way that the Cleveland APL treats its animals. There is such a direct connection there. Use examples that you remember directly from the text we've shown you and the video clips that you've seen. And we also always like to, Mrs. Fisher and I in middle school, like to give real world connections. So think about last weekend. And if you have a pet, um, think about how they responded to the fireworks. What were any methods that you used or strategies that you and your family came up with on how to keep your animal or pet fear free of the, you know, what we just said were the sights and sounds of the fireworks, because I know that we struggle a lot with that, um, with my parents' dog and their dog is just terrified with the fireworks. So we've gotten, um, like kind of like a weighted, uh, blanket or weighted, uh, vest. And they've also given her medicine, but it's very challenging to figure out how to calm your pet during like a thunderstorm or during the fireworks. So we would be very interested in knowing what you guys do with your animals. Okay, so the next clip that the Cleveland APL is gonna tell us about are job opportunities. 
All right, so if you have interest in animals, then you can be a humane investigator. You could be a vet, you could be a vet tech, you could um, do be an intake personnel. All right, and one of the really cool things about eighth grade, those of you that are incoming eighth graders, is we have the True to You program that just dives in super deep to what your interests and talents are and they help guide you into career opportunities. And a lot of our kids, um, our scholars, always say, or a lot of them say that they want to be in veterinary yeah. schools or a veterinarian. Right. Oh my gosh, how can you not be? Look at this thing. <laughs> I know, look how cute they <laughs> are. They are yes. so cute. <laughs> Hi, I'm Katherine Schneider. I'm the Shelter Operations and Client Care Manager here at the Cleveland APL. Now there's a myth that's going around. That myth is that all we do here is play with kittens and puppies all day. Is that true, Bill? That's not true. Although it is a nice stress relief from time to time to have these little cuddlers to come in and, and uh, take a few minutes off and, and relax, but um, it's actually a lot of hard work to work here. Long hours hard work, a lot of teamwork involved. Um, if you want to work at the APL, you've got to A, have a passion for animals. And to have a passion for animals, you need to have a passion for people. We can't help animals without helping the people who care for them first. And that is um, one of our main goals here at the, the APL. So you have to be a good communicator with people as well as loving animals. You gotta be willing to be part of a team. No one here, um, does anything alone. We all do, um, we all come together in order to make the best outcomes for all the dogs and cats and other creatures who come into our care. Um, let me show you a few of the jobs that we have available here. Um, these jobs range from criminal justice, business, um, biology, veterinary services, you won't see this today, but um, development, fundraising, there's just about every opportunity available um, as far as background or education goes to work here and be part of our mission. Here's just a few. An intake associate. Here we have Nate and our RVT Tangier. who are getting blood work on a pregnant stray cat who we're gonna be sending out to foster so she can have her babies outside of the shelter. And vets and vet techs who do important procedures like dentals so that dogs and cats have clean teeth. Our animal care department takes care of all sorts of kinds of animals, dogs to cats, to even the occasional ferret or two. Hey there, bud. Hi. And walking dogs. and they take care of sick and injured kitties who come to the APL to get better before they get their f forever home. You can be a humane investigations agent and help animals in need all over Cleveland from cruelty and neglect. And we have our adoptions associates who due to social distancing have to be six feet apart and we're not letting clients in the room. So they're all on the phone talking to potential adopters and telling them all about the great animals that we have here to take home and become part of your family. So let's take a look at some of the job opportunities available at the APL. And I want you to remember because of CMSD's Say Yes program to college, every one of these job opportunities are available to you, all right? You can be an intake associate, a veterinarian, humane investigator, adoptions associate, all right? So there are just so many opportunities for you. Okay, so for the next slide, you are going to see a whole list of character traits, all right? And what we'd like you to do is to pay real close attention to those character traits you are going to be reading some informational text on animals that have gone above and beyond to save the lives of humans, all right? 
with those character traits, you're going to match the character trait that you think best fits the informational text. And then you're gonna give us textual evidence to support that trait. And with our scholars, we always have a list of character traits in their ELA binders every year. So it's real easy too to find on your phone or if you have a computer at home, you can just Google list of character character traits and that will help you out. Just like these guys would be <laughs> playful. Playful. So playful. And then we would back it up with evidence from just even watching them and observing them today. Okay, so take just a minute and look at this list of character traits. These are what you can use in to, the next flu yep. slides. Okay, so we have Dasher, a faithful friend and loyal guardian. This wonderful German Shepherd, Dasher, lives in Middlewa in Australia. When Dasher was a seven-month-old seven puppy, he earned the title of hero. The dog spent more than 14 hours in a forest during a storm protecting his owner's child. Oh, wow, that's awesome. When two-year-old... Dante Barry walked out of the family. Dasher was the only one who noticed. The child wandered all over the place, but luckily his faithful friend followed close behind him. Eventually, they lost their way in the forest about 1.8 miles from their house. It took a long time for Dante's parents to notice that their child was missing. They called the police and started looking for Dante everywhere but a terrible storm broke out that night. It paralyzed traffic on the roads, so use your context clues. It stopped traffic on the roads and the search was postponed until they had better weather. Can you imagine that happening to somebody in your family? The next morning, 15 hours after it was noticed that the child was missing, Dante and Dasher were found in the forest. The lucky kid didn't have a single scratch. Dasher helped Dante weather the storm and protected him from predators. This photo was taken at the moment of the reunion between mother and child. The woman said that she wasn't surprised with the dog's act because he had always been their faithful defender. Okay, so now let's take a look. All right, which of those character traits do you feel best fits that story? All right, then what would be your evidence to support that? That's a great question. So here's an example, all right, devotion. That would be the character trait we chose. So what's our textual evidence? How do we prove that devotion really does fit? Well, Dante never left the boy's side and protected him from predators. The fact the boy didn't have a scratch on him proves this. Okay, so for the next couple slides, you're going to do this part on your own. So now it being summer, you're gonna see a lot of different lifeguards. So we have dolphin lifeguards. Todd Indris, a professional surfer, narrowly escaped death thanks to the help of some dolphins. In August, 2007, while conquering the waves, Todd was attacked by a great white shark, which was almost 16.4 feet long. So think about how long that is, 16 feet. Wow. That's crazy. So after several attempts to get away from the fierce predator, we have that predator word again, Todd almost lost the strength to keep fighting. So he had to persevere. But suddenly a group of dolphins came to his aid. They formed a protective ring around the injured surfer, keeping the shark at a distance. This amazing team of unexpected rescuers accompanied Todd to the shore, allowing him to get first aid. Okay, so That's really think, cool. what character trait would you match to this text? Wow, I have a lot of good- I good, know, right? Yeah, <laughs> good character traits running through my head right now. This I know, is I wish we were in class amazing. right now. <laughs> yes. All right, and then what was the, what's the evidence that you would use to support that? Okay, Chirami. A carrier pigeon. This is such a phenomenal story. All right, Chirami was one of the 600 pigeons of the Signal Corps of the U.S. Army 
which were used to exchange information during World War II. All right, so eighth grade, yep. you guys coming in, we study <laughs> World War II. In just one year, Chirami made dozens of combat flights and delivered 12 messages of particular importance. Remember, this is before the time of technology. That is so cool. Oh, I know. And so there, there weren't, you know, you couldn't text things. You couldn't send emails. All right, so they were using carrier pigeons. Wow. Okay, so the last trip took place in October 1918 during the... Um, yes. Muse Argonne. <laughs> Offensive. <laughs> the bird was injured in its chest, blinded in one eye, and lost one leg, but still managed to reach, again, we're going we're gonna to say perseverance, its destination and delivered the message. It helped save almost 200 soldiers of a battalion, which had been cut off from its allies. So try to think about what allies means. In 2011, Time Magazine included Cher Omni in the top 10 most heroic animals in the world. And I, again, this is pretty cool information. All right, so what character trait would you assign to this text, this Cher Omni? All right, and what would be your example? This is such a cool story. Hi, I'm Joy. I'm the Project Care Program Manager at the Cleveland APL. And our program is here uh, to provide services for low-income families uh, to help them keep their pets so they're not surrendered to the shelter. Uh, so we do that by offering low-cost wellness care, low-cost spay-neuter. We also have a food bank um, for people that are in financial need to try to help them provide I mean, for their pets um, when they're in uh, times of financial hardship. So right now we're in one of our weekly wellness clinics. We have a cat uh, that was brought in for some really itchy ears. So we're gonna be treating him for ear mites today, getting him updated on vaccines. Um, and during our wellness clinics, we can do preventative care. We can do vaccinations and treatment of minor illnesses and injuries. Um, and we also do a low cost spay neuter once a week as well. Um, so if anybody has any questions or interested um, in learning more about our program, you just give me a call at 216-255-5012. Thank you. Thank you, Cleveland APL, for everything you did to help put this segment together. Elise, Brenda, Joy, Joe, Catherine, you guys are just rock stars. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching today. <laughs> we hope you enjoyed, and we cannot wait to see you next week. All right, we'll see ya. Bye, Bye guys. You. Scientific Notation in the Real World, How to Write, Add, and Subtract in Scientific Notation in a Real Life Context. What is Scientific Notation? Scientific Notation, a noun, a method for expressing a given quantity as a number having significant digits necessary for a specified degree of accuracy multiplied by 10 to the appropriate power as 1385 and 62 hundredths written as 1 and 386 thousandths times 10 to the third source dictionary.com written as a number between 1 and 10 called a coefficient multiplied by 10 called a base to a power called an exponent the exponent can be positive or negative. Positive powers make the value greater than one. Negative powers make the values less than one. How to write numbers in scientific notation when the number in standard notation is greater than one. Begin by placing the decimal point in the coefficient so that the coefficient is a number greater than one and less than 10. Multiply the coefficient by a base of 10. The exponent is determined by the number of spaces the decimal point is moved from the end of the number to the coefficient going left. And since the number in standard notation is greater than one, the exponent is a positive integer.
how to write numbers in scientific notation when the number in standard notation is less than one. Begin by placing the decimal point in the coefficient so that the coefficient is a number greater than one and less than 10. Multiply the coefficient by a base of 10. The exponent is, just, is determined by the number of spaces the decimal point is moved from the end of the number to the coefficient going right. Since the number in standard notation is less than one, the exponent is a negative integer. How to add with scientific notation when the bases and the exponents are the same. When adding, add-ins must be like terms, meaning the base and exponent must be the same. If the base and exponent are the same, just add the coefficients and the base and exponent remain unchanged. How to add with scientific notation when the bases are the same and the exponents are different. When adding, add-ins must be like terms, meaning base and exponent must be the same. If the base and exponent are different, adjust one of the terms so that its exponent matches the other. Note the terms are still equivalent. It is usually easier to make the lesser exponent match the larger one. to solve proportions using cross products. Watch this video and pay attention. It's also 72. So look at that. These equal. So cross products will tell you when proportions are equal. And how we know that is if we tried to simplify both of these proportions, we could see that 8 6 would simplify down to 4 thirds, and 12 ninths would also simplify down to 4 thirds. So they are equal proportions because of that root ratio is 4 over 3. But the proportion or the cross product gives us an easy way to figure out that they are equal. What about this problem? Are these equal proportions? Well, let's try multiplying and get those cross products. 5 times 3 is 15. 10 times 2 is 20. 15 does not equal 20, so that means that 5 halves does not equal 10 thirds. These proportions are not equal. So how is this useful? Well, when we have a missing number, we can use cross products to see what the missing number is. Take a look. Here, if we multiply 4 times a, we're going to get 4a. If we multiply 10 times 16, we're going to get 160. This is just a missing number in multiplication, so we're going to divide to find out the answer. We're going to divide both sides by 4. Well, I'm left with a on this side. And on this side, 4 goes into 16 4 times, 4 goes into 0 0 times. That means that A is 40, so our missing number is 40, which means 4 16 equals 10 over 40. Now, let's see if we can find this missing number using our cross products. All right, let's do it. I'm going to do 21 times 4. And we, I'll do it over to the side. 21 times 4 is 84 equals 14 times x. Okay, well, this is a missing number in multiplication, which means I divide. I end up with x on this side, and then 14, uh, 84 divided by 14 should be 6. Let's just double check it. 
14 times 6. 6 times 4 is 24. 6 times 1 is 6 plus 2 is 84. There you go. 6 is our answer for our missing number, which means our proportion 4 fourteenths equals 6 over 21. That's it. Cross products or cross multiplication is an easy way to check to see if proportions are equal and to help find missing numbers and ratios. That's it for me today. It's the cold math lady. Make sure you try the practice problems to really make sure you understand this. They're on my website, NicoleTheMathLady.com. See you next time. Bye-bye. Let's apply these concepts to real life. The objective is to convert numbers from standard notation to scientific notation, to use cross products and proportions to convert between two different units of measure, to add numbers using scientific notation. Step one, brainstorm three or more places that you would like to visit. You will create a narrative about your travels to these places. Step two, Google the distance in feet or miles between each of these places. Step three, create an aerial map that shows the places you chose. You can use an app or just draw it on paper. Step four, using the ratio of 304,800 micrometers equals one foot or 1,609,000. the total of feet or miles traveled to micrometers using cross products. Step 7. Lastly, tell the story that goes with the places that you traveled. Again, you can use an app or just write your answers or your story. Let's take a look at Anaya McCoy's real life example in her presentation where she goes to Los Angeles. in real life. Malika Hassan's real life example. Let's tour Ohio City. enjoyed this lesson. Again, our objectives were to learn how to write, add, and apply scientific notation, 
as well as solve proportions using crops products in a real life scenario. My name is Tamara Zellin and I am a seventh and eighth grade math teacher at Orchard STEM School in the Cleveland Metropolitan School District. This is EMSD. I am. I am. I am. Joseph. I am. Cleveland's Public Schools. Wow, I did it. Well, I'm excited. Happy to be here. I'm happy to graduate. Congratulations! I feel great. I'm about to graduate. I'm done. It's lit. I'm super excited. I'm I can't wait to see what this class does. It's a it was a goal, and now that I'm finally accomplished it, I'm happy. Well, our students have been really fantastic. This isn't what they wanted. It's not what I wanted. This is my first class that I came here 13 years ago when they were kindergartners, and I was looking forward to the celebrations more than I ever do. But we have to be safe, and COVID-19 isn't gone. And as the kids have gone through, they've just had joy on their face. They, you know, they're honking their horns. Their families are celebrating. And so we're going to make the best of this because that's what Cleveland does. I'm just blessed that we still was able to do something like this to celebrate us because this is a really big deal to get your diploma and just graduate. I'm about to go to a whole new chapter in my life, college. It's, it's different. I'm very confident I'm, I'm going to accomplish everything in life. <laughs> 